This is Being on World of X Games. I saw Sean when he was a little kid in Big Bear snowboarding, like with a helmet that was as big as his head. He looked too small to even be snowboarding. And then I saw him approach the half pipe and I was like, all right, I want to check out what happens here. And then he was doing these airs out of it, like three, four feet out. Sean was probably seven when I met him and he was tiny, like really, really little kid. He was going for it, but you know, they, you didn't really think anything of it back then. It was like, oh, look at this cute little kid in the half pipe. Oh, don't hurt yourself. And then it wasn't for a while until we figured out like that there was something there other than some cutesy points. I was just like a product of what was around me at the time. Even going to Big Bear and Snow Summit, they were building the best courses. They had a half pipe with the tow rope, like, and then think about on the other side, Tony Hawk was like donating the vert ramp at the local YMCA where I skated every single day. So, I mean, I'm definitely a product of like what was happening around me and what was happening was, you know, the best of the best doing their thing. Tough, tough moves for Sean White. He has been scratching at all the heels of the pros winning the big contest. And you know, he would love to take home a gold. You know, at that point in my life, I didn't fully belong in skating because of snowboarding. I didn't fully, you know, belong in snowboarding. I lived at the beach in like San Diego. So I kind of had this weird, you know, world that I lived in. And the only people that were the ones that I could count on were my family members. I think that maybe started the whole thing where Sean was kind of on his own him and his mom and his sister, him and his mom and his brother, him and his mom and his brother, his sister and dad. Like they were always like this unit of themselves. His mom, Kathy, checking out his last and final run. This is Sean's last chance to bust into the medal round. Families were like, your, your son's a cardiac kid because I had my open heart uh, surgeries when I was born. I had a heart condition. So they're like, you're letting your cardiac kid do these dangerous sports. You guys are out of your mind. Like no one really respected us or believed in us. And so not only did I want to win, but I wanted to like prove all those people that I was something because everywhere I turn, they're like, your son's gonna be uh, uneducated, you know, bum on the streets because you're putting him out there in these sports that have no future in them. So I was trying to not only prove that I was somebody in this world, but then again, I wasn't just a kid, which was even harder because you're trying to stand on your own two feet and it's like, even when I'm standing, I'm this tall. So I was, I was, you know, definitely trying to earn my place. And I, I hated the fact that they're like, he's getting kid points. He's just, uh, you know, like it was a sideshow thing. And then I had to make my point by doing the hardest tricks out there and, and, and actually trying to win these events. There's a big chip on that kid's shoulder where he's, I need to be number one. I want to win. I always talk about how I could win, you know, the Olympics or something and you could beat me in just in a hand of cards later and I'd be pretty upset about it. <laughs> like, I had him, I knew he had the pair. <laughs> like, I, I, I can't really separate it. It's like one of my best and worst qualities. He kind of set the standard for young kids to be winning. I feel like he was the first guy to make it a true reality. Be at the US Open and be at the X Games, but not only just be at them, but be the guy to beat. He just was one of the first snowboarders to take competition really serious. Look, that guy drops into a half pipe. He goes 10 feet bigger than everybody else. That doesn't just happen. There's something that clicks in your head. He is not scared to go faster than everybody else. He's not scared to push himself and be comfortable at that height. Look at the size of that, a 19 foot backside here, into a huge front side double court. It's a crazy thing to see with, with him just tapping into that. Oh, and there's the double, Nikki putting it down into the backside rodeo line. Goodness gracious, what about that run? Sean's been on top since 2005. He has been the one to beat. He has been virtually unbeatable since 2006 in the half pipe. If he even messed up, he would still be on the podium because he was miles ahead of everybody. When he comes to win, 
He doesn't just want to squeak it. He just wants to stomp on everybody. He just has a, such a deep bag of tricks that he can draw from, and they're all so big that you cannot help but reward him the win. A perfect 100, the first time ever. Wow. That is why this dude is Sean White. You know, to win is hard enough. It's like to win after winning is, is the real challenge. When you have a winning streak like that, like Sean has, people see you as you're either winning or you're a loser. And that means if you got second place and you were one-tenth of a point under the first guy, you still lost. 23 X Games medals, 15 gold. I can't remember a competition where I wasn't like expected to win or expected to be the guy. So I would use it as this like amazing motivator, but you know, after years and years of doing it, it's kind of like you gotta find these new things to get you to that place. Sean White, a kid that once people thought was a novelty to have skating here. I don't think vert skating had ever seen anyone like Sean. When he came into the competition scene, he brought a level and a seriousness of competition that people hadn't seen in a long time. You know, he came in with a fire and with confidence and with pressure. As he got bigger, as he got more confident, he blew my mind with how good he got on a skateboard, where he just had so much natural talent. Hardest routines every single time. I think Sean White might get a medal here. <laughs> what I brought to vert skating was the ability to do like big flips and big spins just because you know, I knew that world in snowboarding. So I think it really separated me from a lot of the other skaters. Battling Sean White for six years straight was awesome for me because I don't think I would have been as good as I became if it wasn't for him because he definitely pushed me to, to, to skate better and to um, to put pressure on myself. I think Sean got fired up by it where he could win in the winter and come skate against these guys that have been skating vert all season long and not only compete, but win. You know, they really complimented one another. Skateboarding for me was just like a completely different world. And, and, and at the time when I went pro in skateboarding, I was the best at snowboarding. And I was starting at the bottom of the barrel again in, uh, and skateboarding and it was this amazing thing to be like the underdog again and it just really gave my life purpose. I really feel like you know my ability to and longevity in the sport of snowboarding is because I skateboarded every summer. That's it! That's the best run we've seen. There's no doubt in my mind that Sean is one of the greatest. He's the most dominant competitor that's ever been on a snowboard. Absolutely. He should be respected and revered as probably the best dual sport, action sports athlete ever. The fact that he won the Winter X Games and the Summer X Games, vert events, half pipe events, like, is unparalleled. No one else has done it. Maybe as the sport grows, we might see another one like Sean in generations to come, but definitely as it stands right now, I don't think there has been or will be anybody as successful or famous or dominant in two sports as Sean White. You know, motivation right now is coming from a lot of different places. Um, you know, having gone to the Olympics and won, and, and knowing what that feels like, and then having gone to the Olympics and lost, and knowing the experience that happens afterward, you know, people still came up to me and they're like, you're the champ, y you know? And, and it blew me away because I just thought everything before that Olympics would be erased. And, and it's, it's nice to see that, you know, no matter what I do, you know, I'll still be recognized for the accomplishments I've already, you know, um, had in this sport, which was really eye-opening for me. And now at this point, I'm like, well, you know, if I can go and win and people call me the champ and I can, I can, I can lose and people are still pumped for what I've done for the sport, I mean, like, you can't really lose. So 
I'm having a lot more fun this time around. I'm more um, excited about it and I've been kind to myself. I'm not doing slope style, I'm just doing half pipe. I'm just having fun. It's, it's, it's as cheesy as it is to say, I'm like, I'm just really enjoying myself. And all the stuff I wouldn't do before, I just sit in the hotel room and like wait for the next day. I'm like, I'm gonna get them the next day. You know, like the competitor in me, I'm like, tomorrow. And I'm just like counting the hours and like I can't even sleep. So I found a way to want to win just as badly, but you know, have fun while doing it. So it's a nice combo.